Sir, Dallas, Texas, through and through. You okay. Me? Um, yes, sir. So are you are you a big Spence fan? Absolutely, a hundred percent big Earl Spence fan. As you can know, yeah. I mean, as as you know, you feel me? I'm I'm hurt. Right. So oh. let's just get right into it. So <laughs> leading into that fight, you were yeah. choosing Spence. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I picked I picked Earl Spence to win that fight for many different reasons. Uh, number one, I'm from Dallas, so I'm supporting my guy through and through. Of course. You feel what I'm saying? Um, you know, and we knew me myself. Um, you know, other Earl Spence fans, people that's from Dallas, that's Earl Spence fans, and people that's not from Dallas. Most of us understood uh, the type of fighter that Earl Spence was facing and Terrence Crawford. I knew what Terrence Crawford possessed going into the fight. But I broke the fight down logically, uh, stylistically, skill for skill. I looked at, uh, you know, what Earl Spence does best um, and what Terrence Crawford does best. And um, but still back my guy. You feel what I'm saying? And I went in believing that he could actually win a fight, though he didn't. It didn't seem like he looked to be himself. You know, so, okay, but so, to, to take nothing so, away from Terrence Crawford, though, he did his thing. So, so let me ask you. Okay, so when the fight was said and done, right, when it was over, what were you thinking? Like, what what's the first thing that came? Like, the, first, the first thing that came to my mind was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? My boy done got in there and got his ass whooped. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Point blank, period. But I knew that was a possibility. My prediction was, I, I said that the only way Terrence Crawford would win that fight would be by stoppage. And I picked Terrence Crawford as the best finisher in the sport. When he hurts you, he going to finish you. See, and that's I, exactly what happened. I was the opposite. I, I was leaning towards Bud, but just, you know, just a little lean. I didn't expect what happened. I actually went on record saying I don't think nobody's stopping anybody in this fight. Yeah. Both their wills are too strong. They're not going to let it happen. Um, I think a lot of us, most of us were wrong. You know, even the people picking Bud didn't expect it to go that way. And No. Nah. Um, so you said that he didn't look like himself. So I, I've touched on that. Now, the problem with talking about that is some people take it as, as you're trying to, not you, but people in general, cause I've talked about it Yeah. and you know, I'm not from Dallas. I'm not from, I'm from, I'm from New York city. So I don't, I, I had no, uh, allegiance to either fighter. I right. didn't like one or the other any better. Um, the problem is when you talk about reasons why a fighter might, might've not looked good, people think that you're discrediting the winner, which I always say two things can be true. Bud could have been amazing, and Arrow could have had something that made him look not as amazing. That could right. be true. That's um, right. Doesn't take away Bud's performance. So, what do you think? What did you see wrong with with Arrow? That's well. Idea? Well, first and foremost, let me say this: Terrence Crawford, number one, going into the fight, I knew he was an incredible fighter. Incredible right. fighter. I mean, pound for pound, skill for skill, one of the best fighters in the sport. And so uh, not to take nothing away from him. Like you can't, he put on a great performance. He was flawless. You can tell that his preparation, he and Bo Mack, they whole team, his prepara preparation was way better than right. Earl Spence's preparation. So I don't want to take nothing away from Terrence Crawford. As far as Earl Spence, I say that he didn't look like himself because it just I just didn't see the the vigor i didn't see the energy the 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 steam on the punches like his punches seem weak as fuck to me like to be real can i cuss yeah all right course. his punches seem weak as fuck you feel me he just seemed lethargic and right. just looking at his body language and his face be like in a locker room it just didn't seem well like he was all the way there but again that's that's not terence crawford fault well, Tess let me, Crawford did exactly what he's supposed to do. Let you me take touch on that. that. Let me touch on that. So yeah. the one thing that I saw was um, I, I'm going to try and describe it. His eyelids look super heavy. His speech was slow. He almost seemed. People said he looked like he he was high. He did. I don't think he was he high. Did. Or I don't he looked think like he would, man. you know when you wake up from a nap and you're just groggy. He looked like that, but it was like the whole time. Yeah. Um. I heard a bunch of different ex uh, rumors, you know, injuries, uh, all kinds of things that might be, you know, weight draining. I don't think weight training does that to you. No. Um, but one thing I'll even agree on, and again, I did pick Bud, was that Crawford, uh, excuse me, Spence did look like he was impaired or slowed down a little bit. Now, to be clear, though, I don't think that would have made a difference in the fight. I think Bud was so far ahead of him. It, 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 
But again, two things can be true. But I agree. Could have been amazing, and Spence might have had a couple hiccups along the way. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what it was because it's weird because, you know, they talk about, well, you know, so I, people were talking about maybe it's a neurological, maybe Parkinson's kicking in, maybe uh, head trauma from the car accident. But why 12 months earlier against Ugas, you didn't see any of that? Right, you know, exactly. It doesn't that's, why, that's why I can't really put too much, like, stake into none of that. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because this man that got checked out by doctors, they allowed him to get to this point. He done went through a rigorous training camp. You done had a couple of fights after the car accident. None of that shit right there. Like, I'm not, if Earl Spence say that he was good, then I'm going to take it as he good. Yeah, so you can't, you can't take that away from Terrence Crawford. Right. Uh, to me, what, what kind of got me was, I don't know if you saw this, but at the end of the fight, they're back in his locker room and he's sitting down and his son is next to him. Yeah. And he goes, uh, we're going to do it again. And, he, yeah. and the son didn't understand him because he was so slurred. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, no, I saw that. I and then he that. gives, and then he goes, "We do it again." And then he said, yeah. and, and that's like, when I was like, like a real G. But his son couldn't even understand him, which to me says a lot. Like that's how slurred he was. Yeah, you if know, his but, son is, you know what I'm saying? I mean, whatever. I could be reading into it wrong, but no, nah, I feel you. The same thing you seen a lot of people saw, whether you're an Earl Spence fan or not. But again, the only reason I brought that up is because I'm just giving you my genuine perspective right. on, from an Earl Spence fan on what I saw. Because going into the fight, I'm thinking we're going to get an energetic, uh, you know, a, ver a fierce, strong, competitive right. Earl Spence. And we just didn't get that. So I have uh -oh. to paint, I have to put that out there as far as my perspective. But again, yeah. Terrence Crawford was phenomenal. I don't know amazing. if Earl Spence was 100% if that shit would have even mattered. That's how good Terrence Crawford exactly. was on that night. Exactly. It wouldn't have mattered. And, you know, uh, to me, I say this, I tell people, where I, when I saw that Arrow was in a lot of trouble, was at the beginning of the third round, after he had just gone down, which was kind of a flash knockdown, he came out and, you, and, you know, he had the uh, fire under his ass, and he yeah. went in, if you remember, he threw the, a jab and a hard overhand left, and yeah. it landed and clean. It didn't do shit to Terrence Crawford. Nothing. Nothing. That's when I was like, okay, this – because he was trying. Errol yeah. was really trying. He was. Like, make no mistake about it. Ain't no hole in Earl Spence's blood. You see, every time he right. went down, the ref asked you, do you want to continue? The man got back up, face bloody. He stood on all ten toes, you feel me, went out right. on his shield. So right. you got to give him respect for that. But right. I agree. When he went down on the flash knockdown, because that was the first time that I had ever seen him down, it made me think, like, I'm like, damn, bro. I don't yeah. know. That shit kind of crazy. But then he got back up. I had him win in the first round. So I'm like, what? okay, that's yeah. a 10-8 round for Terrence Crawford. Third round, Earl Spence go back out there. He got a little fire up under his ass. He, he walking forward with the jab. But Terrence Crawford was just so sharp, throwing in between shots, punching when you punch, using that southpaw jab to negate Earl Spence's jab. Because every time Earl Spence even thought about throwing a jab, it's like Terrence Crawford had a bead on it. And he was hitting them immediately. His jab was getting there way before Earl Spence's and don't, jab. Don't forget and I'm Crawford. Like, Damn. Crawford's a right hander in life. So yeah. that that right jab was like a shotgun. The power jab, yeah. Right. It's really um, a power shot. One thing that I saw Terrence do, which a lot of people don't talk about, they talk about his countering, and that, but he was setting so many traps. Um, you know, so many traps that uh it, it was it was really, I mean, you know. It was really a great performance. So, I mean, okay, so let me ask you this then. Do you think, now try and be as, as take the Dallas out of you and just be a, like, unbiased. Do you think at 54, there'll be any difference? So here's the thing. Realistically speaking, I think Terrence Crawford showed on that night that he was the more skilled fighter. Right. However, however, at 54, I do believe that Earl Spence could give a better account of himself because I think he'll feel stronger, more energetic. Um, maybe he takes a different approach to the fight. A lot of people say, well, he went forward. He was aggressive. The only alternative is to box him in more of a chess match middle of the ring, which people would think would favor Terrence Crawford more. I absolutely agree. Mid range that would favor Terrence Crawford in a boxing chess match. But I would like to see it. I would like to see if Earl Spence Earl Spence can go wit for wit, skill for skill with Terrence Crawford. And maybe he can at least be a little bit more strategic so, and take the fight into deeper waters and be, right. you know. So if you had to bet right now, who would you choose? 
Terrence Crawford is clearly the favorite going into okay. the fight. But now, but let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I'm okay. still picking Earl Spence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going with my guy, though. You that's hear cool. Me? And, I'm you still know, going no, with that's, my guy. That's how it works. So here's something interesting. From what I've been told, today was the last day that Errol could trigger the rematch. And yeah. I haven't heard anything. Now, that doesn't mean I, that it hasn't happened because they haven't right. announced it yet. But I've been hearing... I don't know how true it is, but I've been hearing rumblings about him initiating or um, triggering the rematch. Um, I don't know if they I, I don't think that they made any official announcements, but that's what I've been hearing. So I'm hoping that's the case. I made a video on why I think that fight is the most logical thing for Earl Spence to take next, simply because you got to see Terrence Crawford at some point. If you want your get back, the only leverage you have to get back in the ring with him is this contractual rematch that you I tell have you, man like i talked to a lot of you know i was a fighter myself i don't know if you know my background um and i talked to a lot of fighters world champions you know like for example i was talking to shane mosley about this and he amongst others were like uh don't do Errol it needs not don't do it don't do it now okay rest right you know and to me like you know, fans, it's one thing, but when you speak to guys who have been in there and been in there at that highest level, you know, like I was a fighter, but I wasn't at that high level. You know what I mean? I wasn't fighting for world titles and all that shit. So, um, you know, there's something to be said about what, what it did. Now, now people are saying he should retire and all that. that that's insane. He shouldn't retire unless he has something wrong. Right. Which we don't know. I, I don't think there's something wrong, but at the same time, like we, you and I were talking about earlier, he was cl there was clearly something was going on, you know. Um, so I just hope that he's like I spoke with Blu Ray. Shout out to Blu Ray. What's that? I shout said shout out to Blue. Yeah, shout out to Blu Ray. You ever talk? Yeah, talk no, I don't. I don't know him personally, but he's okay. from the city. You know what okay, saying? shout right, out right. to him. So I talked to him. Now, obviously, he wasn't involved in this camp, but he says something to me like, because he still talks to everybody. He knows, you know, and he said something because he couldn't really get into it. He said to me, I know what was wrong, but I can't talk on it. I didn't push him. I get it. But he said something along the lines of, which, which spoke volumes to me. He said something, something, something about the rematch. But first, make sure Errol, all his medical tests are cleared. He said something along those lines, which made me think maybe there is something going on. Yeah. You know, beyond just uh, whatever. Um, so hopefully it is not. Hopefully he's okay. Well, I was I was thinking that as well. Like if he fights again, then that lets me know that they at least went through the proper channels because all of the the eyebrows that are being raised from how he looked and the all the speculation about the neurological da damage or anything that could be going on mentally with him. I think that's raising so many red flags that they gonna have to take a look at him. And in order for him to fight again, I think he's gonna have to pass a level of test. To be able to get cleared but again. Don't you so, agree? Like you're you're yeah. an Arrow fan, but don't you? I mean, you saw something off. Don't you think you should be looked at just to make sure? Absolutely. I mean, I think every boxer should be looked at and cleared before they right, get. But in the here's ring. the thing, though, and I've been through these tests, right? You don't get MR. You don't get CAT scans of your brain. You don't get uh, right. MRIs as standard. You don't do that. So right. it has to be ordered. Right. So that you know, standard medical for boxing is pretty simple. Um, so hopefully it's just put the ordered. light in your eye and shit and make light it in your eye. Um, right. uh, yeah, they look at your eyes, but they don't run. They don't do any tests to see if there's something wrong with the brain. They don't take. So whatever needs to be done, hopefully it's being ordered to be done right. because passing a standard test might not detect anything that's really going on. Right. Right. But look, this is why I say that he should fight Terrence Crawford next. Now, if from a logical standpoint, you think, OK, get you most of first and foremost get you some rest take some time off make sure you heal get checked out then get you a tune up the reason why i say he should fight terrence crawford next is because the way terrence crawford performed what reason does terrence crawford have to fight him again later on down the line just the con contractual obligation but that has a that has an expiration date on does it i don't really know the the, the inner workings of the contract I don't think that you can take a fight here, take a fight there, and right. then double well, they, back. Right. It they hasn't. Just, they, you just right. said yourself that there's yeah. a certain time that he got to right, 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 right. No, so you're right. My, my point in being, if Earl Spence ever wants to get back in the ring with Terrence Crawford, that's just how he built. You right. get your ass whooped. He want to get back in the ring. 
his only leverage is this contractual rematch. That's yeah. the only reason I say that because Terrence Crawford, he gonna look at it like, now I respect Terrence Crawford so much and I think he has a respect for Earl Spence to the point where it's like, even later down the line, he'll say just off a handshake, I'll fight you again. But for Earl Spence to secure that, I think the rematch is that's the best way to go. If right. he's okay, if he's not okay, then you know, health is first. Well, okay. Well, I guess Errol is kind of a wild card right now. We don't know what he's gonna do. We don't know who he but so let's move over to what we do know. We know that we have Charlo versus Canelo coming up. Yes. And we know that Bud initially is weight weight classes for a reason, 160 tops. And he goes on Joe Rogan, and suddenly everything changes. Right. So first off, Charlo or Canelo, who do you got? Well, I think Canelo is the favorite in that fight because Charlo is moving up two weight classes. So if I had to bet money, I would put money on Canelo just for him being the favorite. But I think that Jamel Charlo has more than a chance to win that fight. I think skillfully – um, he can compete with Canelo on every level. Um, he has the size, the reach advantage. Um, I think he has the boxing ability, the foot movement to be able to move around the ring, make Canelo work, you know, make Canelo have to corner him, which Canelo is really good at doing. Um, great jab, great left hook, great counter punching ability, which a lot of people don't give Charlo credit for. Yeah. The issue that I think Jamel is going to have, the biggest question is how he takes Canelo's power. How does he react to when Canelo hits him with a solid shot? You're right. That's on number one. You're right. No, number two is can he gain the respect of Canelo Alvarez with his power? Those are the two major questions. It's not a question of boxing ability. It's not a question of ring IQ. It's not. None of that is in question. Is can he take Canelo's shot when he because he gonna get touched, and can he make Canelo respect? Him? That's and gonna be the key. I agree with you. And if I had to guess from what we know. And hold on, just for the record, uh -huh. I'm going with Jamel Charlo. Yeah. But Texas. I think I Texas. think Canelo I think Canelo Alvarez is the favorite, but you know, I got Jamel in that fight. I'm going for Charlo too. Yeah. I, I really you know, we, I, we we I have we have a couple friends in common. I've never actually talked to Charlos before, unfortunately, but we have some close friends in common and I really like the way he's been handling himself. Uh, during this, because you know, he, he's been known to be a little bit of a live wire, but during this press conference, the way he's talking, he's so super likable. Um, you know, he makes he makes you want to root for him, at least me. Um, so I want him to win, and I like upsets. Um, yeah, but to answer your two questions, and I agree with you, I don't think if Triple G couldn't make Canelo blink, I don't think Charlo will, but but we don't know. And the second one, can Charlo take Canelo's power? That's a, that one that you don't know because Charlo's fighting at 54, but you know he walks around at like 180 or some crazy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Um, I just I do hope he wins. Um, but I'm with you. If I it's had a huge fight. task. It's a huge task because you know Canelo, man. People can say what they want about him. I have my. You know, my reservations about Canelo, you know, um, what, we can go down. The, <laughs> yes, the drug cheat, I, you know, whether he got cleared or not, I just don't like how the WBC and WADA was able to facilitate a, a, a deal to increase the levels of clenbuterol right. that you can have in your system specifically for this guy. That's crazy. Um, there's also been the, the masterful cherry picking, but he's fought great fighters, so you take nothing away from right. Canelo in, in that right. aspect. This is great. A this, He's in a, my in my opinion, sorry to cut you off. This, no, in my opinion, good. is a fight that because Canelo just had two fights where he lost one and then didn't look good in the other one. True. So I think it's his way of being like, let me take a lower risk fight, right? But also look good because I'm fighting an un technically undefeated. I know he's not undefeated, but Char Charlo really didn't lose that, that that only loss he has, right? It was kind of a bullshit call. Yeah. And then on top of that, he went back and rematched him Avenged and beat him. So. Knocked him out, right. So, yeah, I think Canelo is doing that. Um, and it might backfire in his face. I thought it was a very strange – look, I'm not big into calling fighters out for ducking and all this shit because, you know what, like I want him to fight Benavides. I think we all do. Yeah. And, I, I, and I've interviewed Benavides a ton of times. Yeah, I love Benavides, man. He's a cool dude, one of the best talents I've, I've seen in a long time. 
and I think we're all gonna, you know, I don't want to get sidetracked, but I mean, he has so much more than just a, a hard puncher that moves forward. He has a lot that he's gonna show. But the point is, I want to see him fight Benavidez, but it's not happening. But at the same time, I understand, like you just said, Canelo's fought everybody and their mother up to recently. Yeah. So <laughs> why can't he take a couple, you know, Tyson Fury just took this is his third kind of easy-ish fight. It's getting a little out of control now with fighting an MMA guy for us. But, right. you know. When there's the, undisputed out there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, but Tyson Fury, did you watch that Netflix documentary? I did. I, I didn't even know he had one. Oh, yeah. You know what? You're like the fit. That's so funny. I talked to a lot of boxing purists like yourself, and most of them don't even know about this documentary. It's number one on all of Netflix, like on all of Netflix, not just What's the name of it. It's called At Home with the Furies. It's a okay. nine episode show. They started filming it right after he, he right after he beat um, the last guy he fought. I think Dillian White. Yeah. It was filmed okay. then. Do, do you remember when? Do you remember when he started giving um, AJ those? He did a video giving him ultimatums. You know, sign the contract. You have eight days. Yeah. That's when it was filmed. They show him actually filming that in his bedroom, like of that that Instagram video. Like the cameras are. Um, but in this documentary, Fury straight up says, and I respect him for saying it, even though some people might look at it as ducking, he goes, look, if I'm going to fight this middleweight dude who I'm supposed to be, it's a lose-lose for me. If I'm doing that, you know, what if he, I get robbed? What if they go, I want to get the 75%, the lion's share of the money. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. It's too risky, and I want to get rewarded for it. So in a way, he's, he's kind of admitting, yeah, I'm yeah. negotiating – dirty because or not dirty but you know hard because this is risky yeah he keeping it a hundred yes and that. you know i get it but i would look at it the other way around if i was him i'd be like this little dude i'm gonna crush him like it's gonna be such an easy fight um i think especially after what we just saw with dubois i think it's gonna yes. be, i think he's gonna you know but we got sidetracked we we're talking about right canelo so i agree with you though <clears throat> i think those are the two things that are total wild cards in this fight, but I'd have to lean with Canelo. So now that being said, Bud Crawford's next fight probably will be the winner of those, but it might not be because if they rematch, they'll be tied up for another year. Exactly. But does Bud Crawford, let's start with the first one. Does he beat Canelo at 68? Can he beat Canelo? Absolutely. It's another one of those situations where I think Terrence Crawford lacks nothing in the skill department comparing to Canelo Alvarez is going to be, can he, what happens when he gets hit by Canelo and can he make Canelo respect him? It's pretty much the same thing with, with uh, Charlo. I think as far as like comparing Charlo to Canelo and then comparing Terrence Crawford to Canelo, um, I actually think skillfully Crawford would be bring a little bit more sharpness to the fight with Canelo than Jamel will be just because Jamel can get a little wild. Um, you know, he can be a little bit uh, explosive and it works for him. Sometimes it works against him, but Terrence Crawford, I think he'll be a little bit more strategic and methodical, sharp, more calculated. And um, it'll be a battle between great counter punchers but because Canelo is a great counter puncher, Terrence Crawford, great counter puncher. Um, I think he could possibly keep Canelo at a distance and box him and, you know, just make Canelo miss and make him pay and hit him with solid shots whenever he does make him overextend. But then it's just that question. What happens when Canelo hits Terrence Crawford flush to the body or to the head, you know? So cool. I really can't call it. I got to see what Canelo look like versus Jermail. So somebody puts, a, somebody puts a gun to your head and says, choose one. Who are you choosing? Terrence Crawford. I don't care what weight they fight at, Terrence okay. Crawford. Okay, so now following up, let's say Charlo wins and Bud goes and fights Charlo. I got Jamel Charlo. Let me tell you why. You got I, him. I, is that your heart going or is that your, your logic? That's, that's logic. Now, okay. let, me t let me tell you why. The reason I would favor Terrence Crawford over uh, Canelo is the, the lack in foot ability. With Jermail, Jermail has that boxing ability with the the mobility on the foot. Um, you know, he can give you angles. He can counter punch with Bud. He throws in between shots just like Bud does. 
it would be a firefight between two very powerful sharpshooting counterpunchers. Jamel Charlo and Terrence Crawford. Now, like I said, Terrence Crawford is a little bit more sharp, but he can get wild too. And I believe if Charlo clips him, I think I think Charlo can take it better than Terrence Crawford can when it comes to punch resistance. So if Terrence Crawford, I think Charlo will be able to take Crawford's best punch before Crawford can take Charlo's best punch. You may have a point. The athleticism. I don't think Canelo has the athleticism when it comes to fighting a Terrence Crawford, if the weight ain't too much for, for Crawford. But with Jermail, he can match Terrence Crawford in the athleticism department. He's also going to be the bigger man, 5'11", a legitimate 5'11 and a half, arm reach. They got him listed at 73, 73 and a half. We know Terrence Crawford is an, an unbelievable 74-inch reach for right. his size. Um but I think that'll be so even and so close, it won't really matter much. Right. It, it'll. I think it'll just come down to who can give it and who can take it the best because you know, they both gonna land shots. I gotta go with Charlo. I've always, I've always picked Charlo to be Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford if they ever moved up to one fifty four. Um, and, and you know, you, how Bud in the middle of while he's in the neutral corner turns around, grabs his nuts, and says, you next? That's some gangster shit. Like, that is... That is. Yeah, that's that out is. of control. Out of I mean, you, you know, he was feeling it, but... Real you know, deal goon shit, for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, You know what? I am going for Charlo, though. Uh, he's really won me over, Um, and I I hope I hope he pulls it off against Canelo, and, man, I'd love this. I, you know, that'd be great, but only time will tell. The problem is... Not the problem, but who does Bud Crawford fight if Errol doesn't activate this this rematch, which is possible, and Charlo and Canelo are tied up in rematches? Who does he fight? He's that's not fighting right. Boots. He already made that clear. That's who right. we want him to fight is Boots, but that's not happening. Yes. Right. He said he's moving on to bigger and better things. I, well, I get it, but he might have no other choice. Right. So here's the thing with that. I think – Terrence Crawford will inevitably fight at 154 in his next fight. Um, I, so. I, I saw that the weight cut wasn't as easy. Like, I told people that before that fight with Spence that the weight cut was going to be difficult for both of them, and it yeah. was. But Terrence Crawford made it better. Um, I would like to see him go after Tim Zhu. I know he's going to be awarded that WBO belt yeah. after September 30th. Um, I would also like to see maybe him go up and fight the winner of Erickson Lubin and uh, Jesus Ramos, who's fighting on that Charlo and Canelo undercard. That's a good, like, ushering in. I know Terrence Crawford level, you undisputed, you want to go in and fight a champion, but Tim Zhu is about to fight uh, Brian Mendoza, right? I don't know. That yeah, so funny. he's he's about to fight the guy who just who knocked out Sebastian Fundora, I believe. So, what about um, what about one time? Great fight. 154, bring him up. The thing is with Keith Thurman, man, he's so wishy-washy. You never know what Keith Thurman going to do. He talk more than he fight. So I don't understand. I mean, he need to be on here with, on YouTube with us because he ain't in the ring. He talking. Talks a lot. Yeah, I've, I've talked yeah. to him before. Like, yeah, he's he's a nice guy. But, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a – Yeah, I, I, I love his personality. I think Keith Thurman is definitely a personality that boxing needs a fighter when he does fight that boxing needs and can use for the entertainment value. And he got skills as well. Um, I would definitely favor Terrence Crawford in that fight at 47 or 54, but I would love to see it the same way that I would have, I still uh, would favor Earl Spence over Keith Thurman. I still would have loved to see that fight, even though Earl was like, nah, I don't want to fight him because he, he ducked me all these years, but I would like to see it, you know, but I think Tim Zoo would be the guy either Tim Zoo or the winner out of Erickson Lubin and uh, Jesus Ramos. Okay, okay. Um, I agree. I think Tim Zooks, that gives him a title at 154 if he wins. Yeah. Wouldn't be very exciting, although, I mean, how old are you if you don't mind me, mind me asking? Yeah, I'm 33. Okay, so I'm, I'm 46, so I got you, but I used to watch Costa Zoo fight in, in real time. I don't. I think yeah. you just probably missed that, right? You're a little too young. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see it live, but I remember. You've seen the tapes, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. So to me, Watching him fight Tim is because I mean they look fucking identical. Him and his pops, Costa yeah. and Tim, it's cr like crazy. I, I, I'm like I sometimes I forget who I'm looking at. 
they look so yeah. much alike. So it's kind of like a nice little like throwback for me to watch them. Feels yeah. like I'm going into a time machine.